What's up everybody, welcome back to the channel. And today I have a pretty different setup. I'm actually recording off my laptop. So the video quality might not be as good because my laptop isn't terribly powerful, uh, but I'm actually at Milwaukee Regionals right now. Uh, and I do plan on making a couple of videos with some other content creators while I'm here. Hopefully we'll get a minute to like sit in a room, record a couple of games in person. That'd be fun if I could like meet up with Joe and a couple of other friends. But for now, I'm in my hotel room uh, and I thought I would make a follow up video to yesterday's video. So yesterday I made a video about the Pokemon that are going to need reworking in Generation 9. Uh, but I thought today it'd be interesting to take a look at the Pokemon that I think are just straight up going to get better in Generation 9. Uh, and obviously last time I talked about Reggie Drago, so we'll cover on that really quick and then I'll talk about a few others. But obviously this isn't a comprehensive list. These are just the ones that I'm looking forward to the most. So if you guys enjoyed, do me a favor, leave a like in the video, subscribe to the channel, turn on notifications. Uh, and yeah. Also answer my comment question of the day. What do you think is going to get better in Gen 9? But let's go ahead and get into it. Sorry if there's a little bit of background noise. There's an air conditioner right next to me and this isn't the same sort of um, acoustics I'm used to working to or working with. So first off, Reggie Drago. So I already talked about this one yesterday, uh, but why does Reggie Drago get better in Gen 9? Truthfully, the reason everything gets better in Gen 9 for this video is going to be the removal of Dynamax as a mechanic. We've seen some of these Pokemon become very highly used in the non-Dynamax format we played in Series 10. Uh, so you're going to see some Pokemon from there, but also we're taking into account that uh, the beginning of Gen 9 will not include Restricted. So that's going to be another thing we have to think about here. Regidrago is a Pokemon with access to Dragon's Maw, an ability that increases the attacking stat. Let me see if I can zoom in here, actually. Does that make it better? That makes it a little bit better. Uh, a ability that... Uh, increases the attacking stat by 50%. So at level 50, uh, Regidrago's special attack stat goes from, let's let's say you're running like a modest set, which is uh, most common right now. Uh, so if you're running a modest set, you're actually going from uh, 167 to, what is that times 1.5? That's 167 plus like 84, let's round to that. So you're going up to like 240, 251 as, your stat, I believe. I might be completely wrong on the math. It sounds like I'm, I'm right. Uh, but yeah, it's a 251 base special attack stat, which is pretty high. That's like an insanely high uh, special attack stat off of Dragon's Maw. And it also has access to Dragon Energy, which when you pair with like a Choice Specs or a Choice Scarf, I think Choice Scarf is usually the best option, but Specs as well if you have uh, speed control. The fact that nothing can Dynamax to eat that and take less damage is huge. Um, you're just consistently going to be dropping base 150 power dragon, uh, dragon's maw boosted dragon energies. So it's, it's comparable to the power of a water spout. If you think about it, because, uh, water spout is coming off of, uh, Kyogre's, uh, special attack stat. However, it's boosted by rain while this is boosted by dragon's maw. So it's a very powerful stat. You could even go with a physical set if you really wanted to. I don't think that's going to be terribly common, but if you wanted to run like a dragon dance, Let's go with White Herb because that helps you block and intimidate on switching. Dragon Dance, White Herb, uh, out, not Outrage, but like what, what's the move? Dragon Claw that it gets. That That's hitting pretty consistently hard, especially if you're running an Adamant Nature. You're going to be at plus one. It's basically a choice band boost if you manage to get that off. And its speed stat is enough where, uh, what is it? I believe you need to hit 112 to outspeed Dragapult, saying like that. 107. I, I think it's 107. Um, you barely have to invest anything where at plus two you outspeed Dragapult, but if you really want to outspeed Dragapult at plus one, I believe that's just barely possible at 80 base speed because Draco Bish is at like 75 base speed and it outspeeds it with a choice scarf. Uh, so yeah, like that's, or I think it become, it comes fairly close or something like that. But yeah, uh, Reggie Drago, it's going to benefit from the fact that Zacian isn't really going to be a thing in the first few formats, uh, as well as the fact that it's going to have pretty much no defensive play beyond getting a fairy tap on the field, maybe Tapu Fini, uh, or possibly going for like a fake out into a double up, because most of the time this thing's probably going to be choice locked, whether it be Specs or Scarf. So that's really huge. We talked about it in the last video, so we'll move past it for this one. Uh, my next one is going to be Corviknight. So Corviknight is a Pokemon that saw heavy play in 2019, 2020, like the beginning of the format. Um, and it was super, super hyped up because it's basically a better Skarmory for VGC. Well, how do I say it? 
Skarmory has lots of singles tools like spikes, stealth rocks, that sort of thing. Well, this one sort of lacks that, but it does get mirror armor for doubles. Mirror armor is huge because if you switch this thing in on an icy wind, it reflects the stat drop on the user. So let's say you're facing, uh, let's say like icy wind Gengar. Icy wind Gengar won't be able to lower the stats on Corviknight. It'll just get the speed reflected onto it. So now that Gengar is going to have its speed lowered. Um, if Reggie Alecki didn't one shot this thing most of the time or pick up KOs with like Specs Electroweb, that would actually be like a pretty cool thing to see. Uh, Corviknight could switch in on it and slow down an opposing Reggie Alecki. So that's really nice. But the main thing is Intimidate. Uh, in non restricted formats, we tend to see a lot of Landorus, uh, Landorus Therian specifically, and I guess we do see it in Restricted too, but less so. Uh, we see a lot of Landorus, we see a lot of uh, Hitman on top, a lot of Incineroar, depending on which is the most available Intimidate user at the time. Point is, Intimidate's a very good ability that gets spammed a lot. Corviknight just having access to Mirror Armor to reflect that on these pretty powerful Intimidate Pokemon is super nice, and it is a Pokemon that gets access to Tailwind naturally. It has the options of Iron Defense, Body Press, um, which in my opinion, gets better with Dynamax being gone. Uh, Dynamax, it, a lot of people experimented with like weakness policy Corviknight in early Dynamax 2019, 2020. Um, and a lot of people sort of realized that maybe Corviknight isn't the best Dynamax Pokemon. And in this metagame where Dynamax is so centralized uh, or centralizing, you need to usually run a Pokemon that has that option of being useful when Dynamaxed, even if it's not your first choice. There are very few Pokemon that will almost never Dynamax. These include the Urshifu forms, Dracovish, and uh, a couple other that I'm definitely forgetting. But Corviknight's one of those that does, it just does better when it's not Dynamaxed. Brave Bird is another nice option, but for the most part, I don't think you're going to be running Flying Stab. I think it's going to be like literally like tailwind iron defense body press roost and it's going to be able to do everything it really needs to do with that granted uh tailwind in gen 8 when not used by a Pranksterman, is a little bit less useful uh since you're missing out on a whole turn of tailwind especially if it's a slow tailwinder so that's a little bit that's a little bit bad for it but honestly i do think that corviknight just gains so much value from being in a non in a non-dynamax format facing off against things like incineroar and landorus uh, and just being able to wall things out so much better now that the power and moves has decreased so much. So yeah, while usually when you face like a Corviknight at like plus two defense or whatever, you can like max lightning through it. Now that option's not going to be there and that's going to make it so much better for Corviknight since you're not setting up that terrain, you're not going to be able to two shot it that way. So yeah. Zapdos Galar actually gets a lot better in non-restricted and we saw that in series 10. The reason it gets better is because Thunderous has Defiant now, which contests it for this spot, but with a higher speed stat and less weaknesses. So we saw Zapdos actually get a lot more usage than Defiant Thunderous in non-restricted, basically explicitly for the reason that Dynamax, that, that Thunderous no longer like straight up beats it if you intimidate it. Um, because basically you would lead off Zapdos versus a Thunderous and you would have an Intimidate user. And yeah, Thunderous can like still wild charge it, but now it's susceptible to being faked out. Uh, and the Zapdos actually provides a lot more damage output in the form of like stab close combats, uh, just a higher attack stat generally. Um, and the fact that it's still gonna, it's gonna have access to these moves like Quick Guard, Brave Bird, all these like super important tools for leading off. Like it becomes an extremely reliable lead Pokemon. And even if we're talking about restricted non-Dynamax, we saw it in series 10 just absolutely go crazy next to things like Necrozma, Duskmane, and Zacian. Being able to like stay in or switch in um, turn one versus like Incineroar and opposing Zacian, you basically get the advantage turn one because you're going to be able to block those quick, uh, block those fake outs and have like an instant plus one. Um, so yeah, like usually you tend to see like Sash, sometimes you saw, you saw like safety goggles, and sometimes you saw Scarf. Regardless, it's just the fact that this thing becomes an insanely strong lead Pokemon um, by the fact that there's no longer a max Airstream Pokemon that can't be flinched. Like you, be it becomes so much more reliable once that option's off the table. So yeah, uh, in at that, it's just like a generally bulky Pokemon. And something else that we saw is this thing can actually run uh, a power item to decrease its speed. And at that point, it becomes pretty slow to the point where I believe you can underspeed some Amoongus sets. And that's actually really huge if you run like a brave zero speed nature. Uh, and that was like a super interesting development that we saw back in the day. What am I saying back in the day? Back in like whatever series that was, series 10, we saw that happen sometimes. I believe that's what it was. I believe you underspeed some Moongus. But yeah, uh, that's insane. 
Let me see. Let me let me confirm that. I feel like I'm dumb because there were some like faster Amoongus running around at the time. Let me see. So that hits Brave, Zero Speed, Power Band that halves your speed. So your speed goes down to, uh, what is it? 90 divided by 2 is 45. So you go down to like 47 speed where an Amoongus in that format would sometimes run a little bit of speed. I just want to confirm I'm not like straight up capping you guys. Just, just absolutely capping, you know, you feel me? Straight cap. All right, let's see. Yeah, it wasn't every Amoongus. It was like the non-zero speed Amoongus that you would see to like um, deal with Calyrex when they were like on outside of Trick Room. Because there were some that would actually run some speed to like sleep Calyrex outside of Trick Room. So that was, that was what I was thinking of there. So yeah, that's actually really cool. Uh, next up, Dracovish. Dracovish was a really powerful Pokemon when Dynamax was around and we had less tools. One-shotting Incineroar, one-shotting all these different things. A Dracovish with a Quick Guard or a Tailwind Pokemon next to it is basically a free hit, a free one-hit KO in non-Dynamax. That's something that we have to just think about. Uh, and that's it. That's all I'm going to say. Dracovish one-shots a lot of things because it has access to Choice Banded strong jaw vicious rend or choice scarf strong jaw vicious rend or choice banded sand rush vicious rend it one shots so many things with this ridiculous move that doubles in power if it goes first so yeah non-dynamax dracovish is going to run some stuff so uh another pokemon that we saw absolutely take lives in series 10 was uh sand not sand force sheer force landris which was released onto the world when no one was ready for it uh it is a very powerful pokemon with uh, a wide variety of sets that it can run but the fact that it can run like a timid life orb sheer force earth power set <clears throat> it's just absurd uh if you don't know sheer force boosts any move by 30 percent uh basically like another life orb if it has a secondary effect but it turns off that secondary effect so the multiplier that landorus gets on earth power is 90 times 1.5 due to stab times 1.3 due to sheer force times 1.3 due to life orb and it ignores the life orb because sheer force just does that for some reason it's like a hidden mechanic that isn't stated so yeah uh it also has access to things like rock slide if you want to run like a naive set with four attack your rock slide won't flinch but it actually does some pretty significant damage or you can even run like a mix set with stone edge if you just want to deal like consistent damage uh sludge bombs another move it gets and the speed tier at 101 is super, super important because you're outspeeding stuff like Charizard, base 100 Pokemon, which is a very crowded speed tier. That makes 101 actually a really solid speed tier to hit um, if you just want to be like an insanely annoying offensive Pokemon. So keep that in mind. Uh, and my final Pokemon that surprisingly gets better in non-Dynamax that I think we all overlooked is Toxtricity. It does get Punk Rock and it gets uh, the move Overdrive as well as Boom Burst. Now, we saw this get some play in early series one and two as sort of a Corviknight counter because it could deal a lot of damage with like a Life Orb or Choice Specs or Choice Scarf Overdrive, um, Punk Rock boosted attacks because Overdrive's 80 times 1.5 because it's stabbed, so we're at 120 uh, times uh, 1.3, so it's basically a free Life Orb and times 1.3. So it's like comparable to like a Landorus attack since they have like a similar special attack set. Uh, but it's a spread move at that. And Boom Burst is actually stronger than Overdrive because while Overdrive with Stab gets boosted to 120, Boom Burst is just 140 naturally. So that's absurd. Uh, so yeah, basically the reason this gets better is in Dynamax, something could just Dynamax, double its health, eat the hit, and then one-shot it. Now, when we're more focused on board positioning, fake out wars, um, quick guard, tailwind sort of stuff, uh, in non-Dynamax formats, the best formats, um, Toxtricity just gains so much more power, and I'm actually really excited to use it because it is one of my favorite Pokemon from Gen 8. Uh, but yeah, honestly, like that's the only thing it is just going to get better at. It's just going to be more consistent damage output. Wide Guard is going to pick up in usage because now something can't just Dynamax to eat like a, an Overdrive or whatever, uh, or a Rock Slide to avoid flinching. So yeah, Wide Guard's another thing that we have to point out. Wide Guard gets better in non-Dynamax. Uh, and while we do see it in Restricted, we didn't see it in non-restricted which is really funny uh because it tends to be used regardless of the format the only reason it started getting used in restricted is because precipice blades dazzling gleam and uh origin pulse and water spot became more powerful or, or more common or i guess used at all because kyogre and Groudon are the only pokemon that get those moves so yeah uh that's gonna be my six pokemon for today uh i guess it's more of a five because i talked about reggie drago the other day but yeah uh, i think these gen 8 pokemon are going to get a lot better uh obviously there are going to be some 
older gen Pokemon that get better, but I focused on gen eight mainly because gen eight is these Pokemon never got to not be in Dynamax and non Dynamax VGC. So yeah, uh, let me know what you guys think in the comment section down below. If you enjoyed, leave a like, uh, and hopefully I'll get some videos out with some content creator friends while I'm here. Uh, and yeah, I'm, I'm planning on meeting that's uh, Joe, uh, Nino Pokey Bros, uh, and a lot of other people. So yeah, uh, hopefully I'll get some videos of them. Have a nice night, and I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye.